Eric Pope covering. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. And yet once again, another accusation against uh, now this time Russia for providing the very missile that was used for the sarin gas attack there inside of Idlib. Uh, Khan Shekhun, the, the province there where al-Nusra, or at least a branch of the al-Nusra group was operating there. They have been blaming one after another, first blaming President Bashar al-Assad, and now Russia is to blame for this. I've been, been waiting for that to be the scapegoat. We wanted to, because I knew already the White House was investigating whether or not Russia uh, had knowledge that uh, President Bashar al-Assad was going to use a chemical weapon on his own people there. And now they come out with their new smoking gun, supposedly that Russia was actually to blame. The Syrian government most likely used a Soviet-made weapon containing the nerve agent sarin in an April 4th attack on the town of Khan Shekun, according to the investigation by the Human Rights Watch. The findings by the New York-based advocacy group add to the mounting evidence that Syria carried out the deadliest chemical weapons attack in the country since March of 2013, still blaming Assad for all these different gas attacks, and yet the evidence is over overwhelmingly against them in doing so. I must state for the record, I will always state this, if indeed President Bashar al-Assad has ever used sarin gas on his own people, as he has been uh, indicted by the West and others around the world as doing, in fact, practically the entire world has indicted him for this, um, then he does need to go. And if it means uh, the United States and their, and their allies that would have to do an invasion of the country to move him from power, then I would certainly support that. But the problem is, there seems to be no justifiable evidence to support this. And this is something we're going to look into as we quickly go through this broadcast. It's going to be a rapid pace, so sit back, hold on tight. This is what they're showing. This is the crater, impact crater right here that supposedly, allegedly, they claim was caused, uh, as you see on the screen behind you. Also, this here is supposedly the Russian KHAB-250 uh, uh, bomb that was supposedly used with the chemical weapons there. From what I understand, there's been different reports coming out of Russia thus far, but this weapon was, uh, according to Russian officials, uh, I believe Sputnik News reports this, that the weapon was taken out of service in 1960. It was never exported. And also they state that uh, as far as this type of weapon here, the KHAB-250 and the 500 series, was designed to detonate, not on impact, but rather 30 to 70 meters before impact. That was to give it its maximum uh, exposure of whatever it was carrying inside. So it's not a, a something that impacts on the surface of the ground. Now, let's move right along here. This here happens to be part of that watch, uh, Human Rights Watch. And by the way, I know there are investigative journalists out there, such as Vanessa Bealey and Ava Bartlett. Uh, and I know Vanessa Bealey has dealt with the Human Rights Watch Group, and I think Ava Bartlett has as well before the United Nations. Very critical of this group. Uh, but let's look at this latest uh, footage that they're saying about uh, in the support that it was actually President Bashar al-Assad. We'll look at a little clip of this right here, in right now. In Idlib and Aleppo. That's widespread and systematic use of chemical. Let me let me back it up just a little bit here. Um, In the last six months, the Syrian government has used warplanes, helicopters, and ground forces to deliver chlorine and sarin in Damascus, Hama, Idlib, and Aleppo. That's widespread and systematic use of chemical weapons, which could amount to crimes against humanity. On April 4, 2017. A chemical attack in Khan Shekhun, a town in northern Syria, killed at least 92 people, including 30 children. Human Rights Watch interviewed 32 witnesses and analyzed dozens of photos and video. Now, if you look at this here, and again, this will also be in the description below, Human Rights Watch seemed to put together a very powerful presentation. But do the facts really support that President Bashar al-Assad actually gassed his own people in Idlib, in Khan Shekhun, in this province right here of Idlib. Um, I seem to have really, especially going back to Gota, where they're also accusing uh, President uh, Assad of gassing his own people. We have, we have shared 
numerous times the information that uh, seems to exonerate President Bashar al-Assad of the guilt of this, especially with Aaron Erdem, the Turkish M uh, MP member. And we're going to go back into some of these things again, but also using U.S. experts and their findings. Remember, President Trump authorized a, excuse me, a Tomahawk missile attack on Syrian air base there, supposedly that carried out this attack, which the Syrians do not deny, neither does the Russians deny that there was an airstrike carried out on this area against the al-Nusra al-Qaeda operatives in that area. And of course, they were saying they were targeting a uh, weapons depot facility uh, when this happened there. So there's no denying that this actually happened. And of course, some are actually stating out there that they already knew who the pilot was, everything. The very man that dropped the bomb, the guilty guy. And some people claim that they have intelligence on this. Well, it's not so much intelligence on that. That was actually being reported uh, already uh, back when this first actually happened. And let me just kind of share with you where that was at. That was on the, the very website archive.is, and this was reported uh, on, the, uh, on the 5th, the very day after uh, the chemical weapons attack that came out. Uh, perpetrator of second largest chemical attack in Syria identified. So yes, they were claiming that they had identified him. Uh, Khan Shakun, chemical weapons, Idlib, countryside, Assad, terrorist as they call him, Observ observatories operating in the province of Hammam, Idlib revealed the identity of the commander of the aircraft that carried out the massacre of Khan Shakun Idlib countryside, which marked the second largest chemical attack in Syria after the August 20th attacks on both eastern and western Godas in Damascus. And of course, they identify him as the pilot, Colonel Pilot Mohammed Yosef Hasuri. And uh, I think one of the reasons why they were able to identify him, because when he came back, of course, he was greeted by the general there for a successful run in taking out the weapons depot that was in that province, having no idea at the time that there was actually sarin gas on the ground that had killed other people. And of course, I know there has been conflicting reports even with Russia and Syria in the beginning about how did this happen, whether or not... Uh, it was a weapon on the ground. Was it chemical weapons inside of the storage facility that they were targeting? Still, I'm not really clear on that either. But nonetheless, the pilot was known about immediately who he was right afterwards. And it was because, not that uh, Syria was trying to hide who the pilot was, they felt like they had done a successful raid in taking out yet another terrorist inside of their country that was trying to topple the government. But let's move on. Let's look at some more serious issues here. And this here comes from a website called WSWS.org. And the uh, journalist that was writing about this speaks about a man called Theodore Postal. He is a U.S. physicist and missile expert from MIT uh, University uh, studying the physical evidence. And he strongly suggests that the delivery system for the nerve gas was a mortar shell placed on the ground. Now, Theodore Postal was actually asked to investigate the, the very document that was, uh, that was uh, presented to the White House, that was declassified, presented to the White House as a justification that they had overwhelming support to actually launch this attack on Syria for using chemical weapons against their people. Now, I'm still troubled at the fact that it was done only two days after this alleged sarin gas attack was carried out by Syria. There was giving no opportunity for independent investigation or a joint investigation where the Russian, at least the Russian government, being more of a neutral party trying to deal with ISIS in the region and the United States, that they could send in their experts to actually investigate this area. In fact, since then, they've actually concreted in that crater in the ground there so that you have no way to be able to pull trace elements from there to see uh, what type of chemical weapon was used, whether or not the fragments from this bomb actually came from a Russian-made weapon or from a Syrian weapon or anything of that nature. But let's see what Mr. Postal says. Just kind of reviewing his report a little bit, it is a quick turnaround assessment of the White House intelligence report issued on April the 11th, 2017. And uh, he was asked to review this information to give his own analysis of it. 
And he says, I'm responding your, to your distribution of what I understand is a White House statement claiming intelligence findings about the nerve agent attack on April the 4th, 2017 in Khan Shakun, Syria. My understanding from your note is that the White House intelligence summary was released to your released to you sometime on April 11th of 2017. He says, I reviewed the document carefully, and I believe it can be shown without a doubt that the document does not provide any evidence whatsoever that the U.S. government has concrete knowledge that the, the government of Syria was the source of the chemical attack in Khan Shakun, Syria at roughly 6 to 7 a.m. on April the 4th, 2017. He goes on to state that, in fact, that main, the main piece of evidence that is cited in the document points to the attack that it was executed by individuals on the ground, not from an aircraft, on the morning of April the 4th. In his conclusion, he determines that it was actually a 122 millimeter casing that was sealed on both ends and filled with sarin gas and was detonated from the ground itself. And that's what he uh, determines on this. He said that the, uh, the assumption made by the White House when it cited the source of the sarin released in the photo photographs of that source, he says, my own assessment is that the source was very likely tampered with or staged, so no serious conclusion could be made from the photograph cited by the White House. Then he also goes on to say the only disputable fact stated in the White House report is that the claim that a chemical attack using nerve agent occurred in Khan Shikun, Syria on that morning, although... The White House statement repeats this point in many places within its report. The report contains absolutely no evidence that this attack was a result of munitions being dropped from an aircraft, he states. In fact, the report contains absolutely no evidence that would indicate who was the per perpetrator of this atrocity. The only source, as he states, the document cites as evidence that the attack was by the Syrian government as the crater it claims to have identified on the road in the north of Khan Shikun. Shikun, excuse me. I have located this crater, he says, using Google Earth, and there is absolutely no evidence that the crater was created by munitions designed to dispense sarin after it's dropped from an aircraft. Now notice that very statement. No evidence that it could be the crater would be caused by a munition designed to dispense sarin after it's dropped from an aircraft. Why? Because as the uh, MIT professor knows, no doubt, chemical weapons are dispersed above the ground, not on an impact on the ground. The data cited by the White House is more consistent with the possibility the munition was placed on the ground rather than dropped from a plane. This conclusion assumes that the crater was not tampered with prior to the photographs. You definitely want to read this article. It is powerful evidence in here. And again, an expert from the United States analyzing the intelligence report that was declassified for the purpose of using this report to attack the Syrian government. And, and even since then, like I said, the, Russia has, has requested over and over and over to be a part of the investigation there to see whether or not there was sarin gas actually used and have been totally stonewalled on this from the beginning. Let's move on. The national world. This is what's interesting. As we have here, none other than Miss Nikki Haley, the U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, warned the emergency session of the Security Council on April the 5th of 2017, justifying rapidly as she possibly could all these children that have died and everything, and we have to act now. And she, you know, the thing is, friends, she's right. If it's if it was President Assad, it should be acted now. But let me uh, let me turn the table around. If the evidence proves that it's Al Nusra, Al Qaeda, maybe the United States ought to act just as rapidly with them as they did with President Bashar al-Assad. Think about it like that. Now. Let's, let's pull up a couple of points on here. This is something I wanted to share with you. Now, this is in their report, April 5th, 2017. The warplane dropped three conventional explosive bombs and a fourth that made little sound on impact but produced a cloud of smoke. Now, keep that in mind. This is the eyewitness account. The smoke was white and thick, he said. It began to spread out until there was a layer over the town. Mr. Saloum watched the raid from about 1.5 kilometers away and used a walkie-talkie to alert rescue workers. The pilot carried out the bombing in one go, four bombs together, he said. We discovered it was toxic gas from a civil defense worker who went to, to the place quickly. 
he told us there was an unusual smell. Less than a minute later, he told us he was dizzy and fainted. We lost contact with him. White helmets, by the way. Don't forget, they have won an Oscar in the United States for the Best Acting Award. Well, I don't know which one they actually got it for, but I would assume Best Acting. So many times they have been busted as nothing but propaganda media. Now, remember though, remember the key points here, all right? Strange odor. In another place, they said it smelled like rotten eggs. Smoke, white, thick, cloud, all these things here, right? All right well, what is sarin gas? Sarin gas, also called GB, is one of the most dangerous and toxic chemicals known. It belongs to a class of chemical weapons known as nerve agents, all which are uh, organic phosphates, the G nerve agents, including Taven, Sarin, and Sumon, are extremely toxic, but not very persistent in the environment. Pure Sarin is colorless, odorless gas, since it is extremely volatile and can spread quickly through the air. A lethal dose of Sarin is about 0.5 milligrams. In fact, some experts say a pin drop of it is lethal to a human, a full-grown adult, right? So here's what's interesting. Rosetta, this is in the Russian language, this is all coming out with them, and then they're responding as well. Zarin or sarin is a persistent poisonous substance in the case of its use. People who are imprinted on the staff and allegedly assist in the injured would have received a deadly infection in a matter of seconds and died on the spots. How they help the stricken from the expert's point of view, otherwise they cannot be called a mockery of the bodies of people. The general says, doubt, uh, he called in shots with elements of the H, uh, HB250 and Khan Shikun. Just think a month has passed since the sadochemical attack, pseudochemical attack, and now there are footage of Soviet, uh, this is the, uh, uh, the weapons that I was showing you here, it's just the Russian name here that we're seeing on the screen. Uh, but this is the weapons here, the KHA B-250 that he's speaking about, all right? I'll jump back over here. And he says, um, the aero bombs naturally during this time, they had to be found somewhere, brought to Khan Shikun to create an imitation of combat use, uh, Sokle argues. And why did not these images appear right after the supposed chemical attack? Yes, just at hand was not the hulls of these bombs. I can call it all just one word. Well, BS is what he calls it. In other words, why are they just now bringing out these bombs in these fragments that they didn't have at the beginning? All right? Very interesting. And he also brings out the fact that why doesn't the people that are decontaminating these sarin uh, victims here, they should have died as well, not using any kind of protective gear, the white helmets. All right? Exactly what you see right here. And this is one of many of the images, by the way. So when the experts, even like uh, that was also, by the way, that's pointed out in Mr. Postal's document as well, is that they were handling these people barehanded, which as he noted as well, sarin gas would have killed them. Hmm. And all these good old white helmet boys, none of them died. Isn't that interesting? Moving right along. The Daily Sheeple. And this is also another example of this as well. Now this, by the way, comes from a White Helmets video. Terrifying scenes from See? a suspected sarin gas attack in northern Syria today. In a conflict now look at this, look at that. Barehanded people handling these contaminated these children. Posted online by activists and people who live in the area show victims, many of them children, struggling to breathe. Now the thing is, I don't doubt that something didn't happen to these children. I don't doubt that a bit in the world. All right, and that's what's despic dis despicable to begin with. But the point is, that is brought out, is that over and over and over, the white helmets are in all of the pictures, they're barehanded, especially in the video, you see barehanded over and over and over, these men should all be dead. All right? Now, let me share with you here this is Henry, uh, uh, I think it's, uh, one, I forget Henry's last, actual last name. He is one of the peace activists that actually went to Syria. Uh, this was before, of course, this chemical attack here, 
when all the world was justifying war because of the chemical weapons that was used in Gota, in, uh, in a Damascus suburb that killed so many people, where it was sarin gas used then and again was blamed on President Bashar al-Assad. Take a listen to some of what he actually says right here, just a couple of seconds here. Um, the truth of what's happening in Syria. I think what Alfred said is so true. We are fighting a mass of propaganda that has demonized the Syrian government, demonized its leaders, a, an effort that precedes every other intervention that the United States has made over the course of many, many decades in order to convince people that it's okay for quote-unquote humanitarian reasons to overthrow a government and to replace it with whatever. I think that's case in point there. The link for this whole entire interview will be in the description below. You need to see it. Also, Ava Bartlett, I can see her up on the right, another incredible journalist like that of Vanessa Bealey. All right, now let's go on to this article right here. Very powerful article. In 2011, Barack Obama, this is by uh, Seymour Hersh, I believe, let an allied military intervention in Libya without consulting the U.S. Congress last August. Uh, of course, this, keep in mind, this is from 2013. The sarin attack on Damascus suburb of Gota, he was ready to launch an allied airstrike, this time to punish the Syrian government for allegedly crossing the red line. He had set in 2012 on the use of chemical weapons. Then, with less than two days to go before the planned strike, he announced that he would seek congressional approval for the intervention. The strike was postponed as Congress prepared for hearings and subsequently canceled when Obama accepted Assad's offer to replenish his chemical arsenal in a deal brokered by Russia, or excuse me, relinquish, not replenish, really relinquish his chemical ars arsenal. All right, now watch what it says here. Why did Obama delay and then relent on Syria when he was not shy about rushing into Libya? The answer lies in a clash between those in the administration who were committed to enforcing the red line and military leaders who thought that going to war was both unjustified and potentially disastrous. Obama's change of mind had its origins at a patron down, a part, part and down. The defense laboratory in Whitshire British intelligence had obtained a sample of the sarin used in the 21st August attack and analysis demonstrated that the gas used didn't match the batches known to exist in the Syrian army, army's chemical weapons arsenal. The message that, that the case against Syria would hold up was quickly relayed to the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff. The British report heightened doubts inside the Pentagon. The, chiefs, the, uh, the Joint Chiefs were already preparing to warn Obama that this plans for far-reaching bomb and missile attack on Syria's infrastructure could lead to a wider war in the Middle East. And as a consequence, the American officers delivered a last-minute caution to the president, which in their view eventually led to, the, to his canceling, canceling, canceling of the attack. What do you know? British reports the sarin didn't match. That's interesting, isn't it? Well, let's see why it would be interesting. Okay. Um, I forget why I actually had this up here. All right. Well, oh, yes, this is why I know why I had this up here. This is just to kind of show you who's in charge there in Khan Shikun, all right? The Khan Shikun chemical attack took place on April the 4th, 2017, on the town of Khan Shikun in the Lib government of Syria. At the time of the attack, the town was under the control of Tahir al-Sham, formerly known as the al-Nusra Front. The town was reported to have been struck by a heavy airstrike by the government forces, followed by a mass and civilian chemical poisoning. Keep that in mind about al-Nusra, all right? Now, I shared this with you the other day. We're going to hit it one more time again. Aaron Erdem, all right? He is parliament member. He went to prison for exposing the smuggling of sarin gas through Turkish borders into Syria to be used on the civilian population by ISIS, who also works with al-Nusra, right? He said, our prophet Muhammad defines hypocrisy as having three signs. The, hypocr the hypocrite lies when he speaks, 
When he promises, he breaks his promise. You know, I don't support, by the way, at all Muhammad uh, or the beliefs of, 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 of the Arabic uh, or the or Islam, but I'm, bring, I'm just quoting to you what he says because I think it's interesting the way he brings us out. And lastly, perhaps mostly importantly, he says, when entrusted, he betrays the trust. Our Prime Minister says that we sent trucks to Turkmen, escorted by National Intelligence Organization. He says we sent the trucks to buy our book on Turkmens. And the Deputy PM says that those trucks were not sent to the Turkmens. Now one of those statements is a lie. So my question is, who is the hypocrite? There is a hypocrite here. Well, he's implying the Prime Minister, of course, according to the meaning of the Hadith. Of course, then they can start giving him a hard way to please consider, you know, avoid using those words. Let's let's move ahead a little bit. The atrocities we have in front of us about this matter. They're yelling at him for even dare uh, inciting President Erdogan. Is that they tell us that the MIT trucks. Let me, let me move forward here. I want to find for you where he actually calls it the sarin gas. They're really giving him a hard way to go because he's indicting all of the government there. Some people are misappropriating the country's resources and betraying our trust, as he states. Um, they didn't like that either. Um, Our ministers of internal affairs is here at this moment, even though this issue is not within his field. I wish I could address my question to the minister of justice. As you all know, many children were murdered with sarin gas in the Middle East. All right. There were various accusations about who uses sarin gas in our media. My question is about the Adnan Chief's public prosecutor. Investigations cases, and he names those case numbers, indictment numbers as well. Don't worry, the prosecutor is not from the parallel organization, he states. The prosecutor in charge is acting in, in uh, excuse me, with the government's desires and actions in the region. It is stated by the prosecutor in this case that raw materials from manufacturing sarin gas were delivered to the ISIS terrorist organization through contacts to, contacts to this group's members. So the prosecutor initiated an investigation and to save time, I'll put the link below for you. He goes on to say that they they had uh, bugged their phones, tapped their or wiretapped their phones. They had proof, 100% proof. They'd caught them. A reporter reported on it. The man, I believe, was imprisoned, and they said the prosecutor actually stated that what he did was it wasn't what he reported was not true. He said he revealed a state secret, a secret that the Turkish government openly practiced smuggling sarin gas with ISIS inside of the Syrian country in order to use that sarin gas on the civilian population and blame it on the Assad uh, government in order to topple from power and to get the United States involved in the war militarily on the ground. That is what he speaks about. Powerful. You need to see it. So at any rate there, as I stated already, this was the actual the, the, the military aircraft that was used, but we already know that they knew the very next day who was the one that did it. You know, guys, the whole point is the evidence is overwhelming.